Hi, welcome to my new channel. It's all about coins, everyone. I collect a lot of beautiful coins, I do. Mostly Britain, New Zealand, Australia, and um, I've been collecting seriously since 2020. Early 2020 was when I first got into, um, well, I actually collected as a child, but that's another story. I seriously got into collecting British half crowns in 1920, and, uh, I mean, sorry, in 2020, 1920. And, um, Basically, I decided that I'd do some videos because some other people have been doing their coin videos, mostly British, and um, I've been saying, oh yes, I've got this rare coin, and I thought maybe, well, it's time to put up or shut up, basically. So, this is the first video. I'm going to be doing plenty more of them. Um, so, if you want to, subscribe. As you can see, I also do prints videos, um, but I will clearly demarcate the difference between these videos and anything to do with prints or singer. So, Today I'm going to start the first of my mini videos on my half crown collection. Now basically my half crowns, um, British half crowns started as gold coins in the 1400s. They started issuing them as silver coins in the time of Edward VI in 1551. But there are only a handful of them from his reign. For most of Elizabeth's reign there was nothing but, um, and we'll explain this coin in a minute, as you can see it's beautiful. Um, there was nothing in Elizabeth's reign at least until 1600 when the six coinage issue. Looks like I had some difficulties with the second part of the first video on my old coins. So I'm going to show you 1670 again. This is my first milled half crown. Um, the coin you saw before the 1635 was um, a hammered coin. This is a milled coin which was basically a screw press invented in the mid 16th century by the French. It was tried in England in 1561 by a guy called Aloy Mistral. Eventually it was superseded because the people making the hammered coins got angry and jealous and Mistral ended up getting hung basically in 1579 for uttering, which is counterfeiting coins. And then a man called Charles, I think his name was, um, yes, Nicholas Brio came over in 1631 and did a few Charles I coins. And then finally in 1662 it was an English guy called Thomas Simon who had designed a few milled proofs for um, Cromwell. He wanted to do the... Um, these coins for Charles when in 1662 they decided they were going to make these um, milled coins and get rid of the hammered ones. But only for the silver so I mean um, there were still um, <laughs> hammered coins being made into the time of Charles II and these are quite rare. But anyway he did a petition crown but the king did not choose Thomas Simon because of his links to Cromwell. He said he chose a, 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 two other men, um, Jean Rotiers, a Dutchman who designed these ones, and Pierre Blondeau who gave us basically the inscribed edge on the coins. This was to stop clippers and forgers because a lot of the hammered coins, I mean, the half crown I showed you is not clipped at all, but when I get to my shillings, I'll show you some, and sixpences, I'll show you some Tudor and Stuart coins which have clearly been clipped. And when we do groats, my oldest coin, a 15th century groat, has like pretty much one third of it's just been clipped away by clippers. So anyway, as you can see, in 1670, this was a lovely, lovely coin. I mean, look at that. This is only fine, so you imagine what this coin would look like if it was uncirculated. And they've got inscribed edges, this one actually says Dacus et Tutamen, which means an ornament of safeguard, and it says Anno Regni Vicesimo um, Duo, which means year 22. Even though it's technically a 10th year of his reign, they count his reign from 1649, basically when his father was executed. So that's how the Charles coins go, so there you are, 1670. And so next we've got 1679. This is a, well, there seems to be a hair on my camera. Um, 1679, this is a very nice, um, isn't it? This is 1676 actually, sorry, yes it is, 1676. And this is a later portrait of the king, so his nose is a bit more prominent, um, he's a bit more worn. They've also got the date inscribed on the edge. These are beautiful coins, um, you won't get much change from 300 bucks for one of them. Then we move on to one of my more rarer coins. This is James the First. Sorry, James the Second. This is 1687. This was a coin I had to fight quite a lot to get one. I remember I, when I bought it back in 2021, I fought with another guy and I paid about 270 for it. It's been cleaned, as you can clearly see, but it's probably still close to fine condition. Um, coins of his are extremely hard to find, especially here in New Zealand. Mainly because he only ruled for three years, and um, most of the time when you hear about James the Second half crown, it's usually a gun money coin from Ireland. Yeah, but this one is um, 1687, which is a good year. And then we move on to um, William and Mary. I've got two coins of theirs. I'll show you this first one first. Um, 
This is a 1689 half crown. This is the first one that showed a crown shield which looked rather European, like the Dutch coins that William was for. Um, there's two shield varieties. This is the first one which is quite common. This shows a nice conjoined portrait of them. Now, I just have to tell you just any further, any pre-1816 half crown is always really, really hard to get in New Zealand, and most of them are worn flat pretty much. So to get one this nice is quite good. So here that's a nice portrait of them there. Yep. And this one, yep, see, so this is the first shield which shows um, the arms of England in the top left corner with Scotland and Ireland. And please focus camera. Yep. And then next, we go to the second one. This is uh, actually the same date. However, as you notice, if this stupid camera ever comes into focus, unfortunately, it's one of the cheapest camera phones you can buy. It's also 16.89, but now you notice that the that the quatrefoil arms are in place of the arms of England. And, it's, and this is known as the second shell variety, which is scarce. And then on this side, we've got the conjoined arms. This coin is much more worn. It's only very good, down to even good, perhaps. And then we move on to William III by himself. And this is a 1696 half crown. This dates from the Great Recoinage of 1696 to 1700. What happened was King William III, who's now ruling alone, as you can see, was a bit annoyed with all the um, clipped coins and worn old coins in circulation, some of them going right back to the 1500s, pretty much. And he decided that there should be a mass recoinage to basically replace all this rubbish in circulation. There was also a forger called William Shaliner, who was basically making poor quality copies of most of these coins. And um, basically everything was very unregulated, so he got Sir Isaac Newton, who was our master of the mint at the time, and they minted a lot of um, coins. Only half crowns, crowns, shillings, and sixpences. And in addition to the ones minted in Tower Mint, which have got no mint mark on them, he started minting them in other places, including Chester, Exeter, Bristol, and York. And this coin here, which is very, very dark, as you can see, because, because I live in Auckland, New Zealand, we have serious humidity issues, and a lot of coins seem to darken up like this. I mean, these come from cold, wet England. This one's also 1696, but as you can see, this is a coin minted in Bristol. This is a 1696 Bristol. This is quite a nice coin. Again, it's in that sort of Neverland between um, very good and fine, like most of my 17th century coins are. Basically, any 17th century coin increases exponentially in price once you get above the EF. I mean, if you want an uncircular EF, one uncircular doesn't really exist. You're looking at thousands, but this is quite a nice coin, I think. Again, I don't want to take them out of their wrappers unless they're like really cheap common. And my final coin is 1697. Although you can barely see it, although the style of it with the small harp suggests it's probably 1696. Again, this is another coin that was minted outside of London. And this particular coin is minted in Exeter, yes, in Devon. Which Exeter, Bristol and Chester were originally mints in the Middle Ages. Please focus camera. Apologies for this technology here. This is the first time I'm not using the computer. But there is an E there. Yep. Although we're not going to see it because this camera's been a complete bloody prick. Anyway, so that's my 17th century coins. Next I'll show you my 18th century ones.